coming to Colorado and being here together. It's really, really important for us all. So when I discovered agriculture, I was organizing to get better food, more local food, onto my campus dining hall at Wesleyan University. And that brought me to our on-campus, two-acre, student-run farm, Long Lane. And that's where I discovered that agriculture was a really proactive way for me to work for a better food system. And so after graduation, I moved to the Hudson Valley and um, for my first apprenticeship. And uh, during that summer, actually, the farm bill was being written and debated. And my member of Congress, uh, Chris Gibson, was a member on the Agriculture Committee, a Republican, and he really hadn't heard from the young farmers in his district. And once he met us and heard our stories, he was really inspired to get to work for us and help us access that um, land and credit that we needed to build viable farm businesses in his district. And so, at that point, I joined uh, the small staff, me and Lindsay Lester Shoup, um, of the National Young Farmers Coalition to travel around the country and meet young farmers and help them work with uh, their members of Congress to fight for a better farm bill. And it worked. Um, when the 2014 Farm Bill finally came out, we won many of our priorities, and including a USDA microloan. How many people here have gotten a microloan since 2013? Okay, a few of you, great. Um, it's available in every county of the country because of our work, um, and it's specifically designed for young beginning farmers. So I realized through that initial work um, that when young farmers were organized and knew how to be advocates, had advocacy training, that we could have a really powerful voice for agriculture. And so the last seven years, um, since 2012, I have had the honor to work with so many of you and so many young farmers all across the country to build the coalition into what it is today. Um, and over the course of those seven years, I also worked with my partner, Andrew, to start our own farm and learn through that experience the incredible challenges that we face, um, but also the rewards of, of startup farming and really take that experience um, to inform my work fighting for young farmers every day. Hi everyone, I'm Martin Lamos. Um, many of you like Sophie are old timers in the National Young Farmers Coalition and some of us are a lot newer. Um, I've been with the organization for about a year and a half. I've been deputy director, interim director, and now co-executive director. Um, and I have to be honest, the first time I actually heard about the organization was only about two years ago. Um, I was hosting a friend and a farmer, a Josh Bull from Oregon, who was visiting our place in Queens, New York, and we were having breakfast, and I was getting ready to go to work. I was working for a nonprofit, uh, working on sustainability consulting, working with major corporations, and I was not excited to go to work that day. <laughs> and just started going off about how, you know, it's so sort difficult, of you know, working in this place where I talk about agriculture, but I don't speak with any farmers, and we talk about climate, but we don't talk about what's actually happening on the ground. We talk about impact, but I didn't feel the impact that I felt when I was a farmer. Um, and just kind of kept going and going. I'm not a very talkative person, so when I'm among friends and people I'm close to, I tend to go into rants. So Josh let me go on for what must have been like half an hour. And then at the end of it, he's like, well, good luck at work. Um, and you should reach out to Lindsay Pleasure Shoot at uh, National Farmers Coalition. They have something to say about all of you, about what you said. Um, so I reached out to Lindsay, had a conversation, and was just really inspired and really touched by having, but knowing about this organization that was confronting all the issues I faced as a farmer. That knew about student loan debt, that knew how difficult it was to access land, that knew how difficult it is for farmers of color, that was working on big structural change. And um, I left that conversation and reading more about the organization, and to this day, I think the overwhelming impression I have 
about this organization is I wish I had this organization when I was a farmer. Um, I farmed for about 10 years. Uh, half of that was spent managing a farm outside of Chicago, 50 acre CSA farm. Uh, I was very lucky, it was a nonprofit farm management role, so I had a salary and an HSA, it was beautiful. Um, and from there, I you know, what got some work doing in international development, so I worked for an impact investment group, I worked uh, for a sustainability consultant, I got my MBA. And I just want to clarify you know, one thing that I feel like I speak to a lot of farmers who are always nervous about if they need to take a break at some point about farming from farming, do they have the skills, can they find a job? And I think yeah. just want to emphasize that if you can manage a farm, you can manage to send emails and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Work outside of farming is really easy. Um, and so much of what I bring to this role is rooted in my experience as a farmer. Um, you know, I learned about strategy not through my MBA, though there was some great courses on strategy. Um, I learned about having to prioritize which weeds to tackle that week, right? And I got better at financial modeling and using Excel, but a lot of that came from having to come up with a crop plan so I could figure out how many seeds I need to buy. Um, so much of our work and our experience is rooted in being farmers and knowing the challenges, but also knowing the just the amazing opportunity that farming offers each and every one of us. Right? The opportunity to connect with our traditions, with our ancestors, with our families, the ability to build community with our neighbors, the opportunity to heal and to repair our, you know, our relationship with the land, with each other, uh, to build community. And so we are really excited as co-directors to bring that work and that values into what we're doing at the National Young Farmers Coalition. Um, yeah, we ran out of headphones that day. Um, <laughs> you know, when the board approached us about uh, being co-directors, we were really excited because for us it reflected what we felt most strongly about the organization, which is the organization is one where we build leaders, and we build leaders plural, right? And we are committed to creating a network of farmer leaders, of sharing power, of building community together. And this co-directorship model for us offers an opportunity for us to, Sophie and I, to always have front and center of our thinking. How do we keep in dialogue? How do we collaborate? How do we share power? How do we make decisions together? Um, so we're really excited to take this co-directorship forward. And we have a couple of commitments that we want to share with you in terms of what we think that co-directorship means. And First and foremost, you know, this organization is farmer-led and farmer-driven, and we want to keep it that way. Um, you know, the success of this organization has been around creating opportunities for farmers to lead, and that model is still, still holds true, so that's not broke, and we want to continue that. So I'm getting a little parched. <laughs> The altitude, yes. <laughs> the, altitude. Um, the second commitment we want to make is around um, around bold and transformational change. Uh, we've heard from many of you that we want to have big solutions. We want to advocate for things that transform the food system, and it's our work as servants to you all, to working as part of this organization, service to all of the farmer leaders, our members, and our chapters, to commit to that. And so we don't intend to limit your solutions or moderate your voice. We want to amplify the big ideas that you have, from tackling climate change, to working on immigration policy, to addressing capitalism. We are here for that, and we want to support you. So bring those ideas. We want to make sure that we push forward those transformational changes. Um, we're also committed to racial equity and making that the center of our work. We think it's really important to acknowledge the sort of racism that has led to displacement, enslavement, and exploitation of our indigenous peoples, of our black families, our communities of color, our rural communities, and we think it's really important as we aim for that transformational change that we begin and proceed from acknowledgement of those, that history and work to develop new solutions that 
thoughtfully address those issues in the food system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. with 
an incredible ad hoc committee of farmers, many of whom are in the room, um, to design that process. And we'll be talking about that more on Wednesday. Should we, maybe we should use that mic too. Hi. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Two mics. Um, and I think some of the other amazing changes that are amazing achievements of this year. I mean, we have an incredible business services and land access team that are working to develop solutions and resources and guides and workshops to help you all, you know, think about land access, get that property that you want, and also help manage some of the important risks around food safety. So this year, we've trained almost a 1,000 farmers across the country, thanks to the amazing work of our business services and our land access teams. Uh, we have also this year launched our climate statement, which came out in September, which um, for us was a continuation of a lot of work that we've been doing on climate, but uh, kind of a recommitment to bold action on climate really positioning you all as climate leaders and making and requesting and asking and demanding that young farmers are at the center of climate policy. Uh, we've grown our staff, so now we have 24 staff, which is uh, it's incredible. Uh, and they are amazing. I hope that over the next couple of days you find our staff, talk to them, let them know what you need from them, but then also Ask them about what they've been working on. They've been doing incredible work fighting for you, creating new resources, developing new guides. It's, um, they are the reason we are successful as an organization. Yeah. Okay, so what's next? Um, as we know, U.S. agriculture is facing unprecedented challenges. It's getting, you know, it's getting serious. Corporate consolidation, loss of farmland, systemic racism, climate crisis, right? And the Ag Census came out in April and revealed increased consolidation and a continued aging of the ag industry. There was a small uptick in the number of young farmers, 2%, uh, but farmers over 65 increased by 11%. So we're just not keeping pace with the aging of the industry. And it's because there are real systemic barriers that are standing in the way of our success. Land is prohibitively expensive, um, and especially out of reach for our farmers of color and indigenous farmers. Student loans are preventing us from being able to leverage the credit that we need to take on really capital intensive businesses. Climate change is threatening our ability to make a living off the land. Um, and systemic racism continues to prevent indigenous farmers and farmers of color from accessing the land and capital and networks really necessary to start and keep farming. Um, and so our voices and our coalition are more important than ever. And, you know, the dominant voices in agriculture really represent the status quo of the industry. But we are the future. Young farmers are the future and our values of stewardship, innovation, and justice, that's what we need to fix our food system. And so we're really committed to tackling these challenges that we're facing together head on. And so over the next year, we've um, chosen a few priorities. And the first is democratizing our coalition, committing, recommitting to being farmer-led deepening our commitment and our work on racial equity and taking really bold and necessary action on climate. So we're going to talk through those three points together. Um, so we've been farmer-driven and farmer-led from the beginning. Um, but as Martin mentioned, we're growing as a coalition, 24 staff, and it's really important to us that we're really formalizing the ways that farmers are leading at Young Farmers Coalition. And building that into the policies um, that govern our organization. And so the, the first step on that is the federal policy setting process that's going to have uh, a farmer elected policy committee um, and voting on our policy platform. Uh, but that's, we feel, just the beginning of what's possible at the coalition. 
And our coalition is <coughs> our board of directors at the National Farmers Coalition is by its bylaws required to be a majority farmer board members. Um, and this year we're working along with the side with the board to begin some new recruitment. So that's something that we hope that many of you participate in. We want to get new uh, farmer members on the board, bring new voices into our board and our director uh, roles. It's a really important oversight responsibility for the organization, and we hope to bring more farmers onto the board. Uh, we are expanding our fiscal sponsorship program, so that's a program for our chapters to become fiscally sponsored, to have the resources and the administrative infrastructure to fundraise, bring on staff, and then also just to take on a big local initiatives. And that's something that we are committing to bring, putting our resources as an organization uh, towards that fiscal sponsorship, supporting our chapters, uh, letting you grow and manage funding and just grow those organizations. Uh, this year, you know, or next year will be our 10th year, and we are due for a bit of a strategic planning process. So it's something that we wanted to take on in our first year as co-directors was uh, just a way of reevaluating and assessing our vision, our mission, our guiding principles, and doing that all with you farmers, all of you. We want you to engage in that process. We want it to be a really robust uh, stakeholder engagement process where we hear from our farmers and use that to really guide what our next farm bill uh, campaign will look like and what the next 10 years of this organization will look like. So if you mentioned also that we want to take bold action on climate and we want to do that because all of you want us to do that. Um, farmers have always had to manage weather, um, and many of us who have gone into farming over the last 10, 15 years stepped into the fields knowing that we were entering agriculture, and the future of agriculture would be one of climate constraints. We knew that going into it. Um, but that level of that crisis and the fact that it's here and now, not just something that is coming up. Many of you are dealing with, or have dealt with historic floods, uh, unprecedented wildfires. We're all dealing with a new normal where it's really difficult to predict what that next season will hold. Um, we know all of you are managing climate risk. And so I think it's really important as an organization, I think it's really important as an organization that we uh, manage risk in climate and also advocate for stronger climate policy that supports you all. Um, we also know that in addition to managing climate risk, our farmers are the climate leaders, that all of you are working to put your farms in great relationships with their ecosystems, that you are innovating and <laughs> fixing things <laughs> and, uh, uh, and you know, adopting new techniques and technologies to uh, manage resources and conserve resources, that you're also stewarding the land using traditional and indigenous, indigenous practices that have uh, safeguarded our soils and our environments for thousands of years. We know all of you are taking these steps on your farm. And so we know all of you are climate leaders, and we think it's important that in this discussion around climate and agriculture as a solution to climate change or a big part of it, that we frame and bring up the voices of young farmers is essential to that. Uh, and we've done a lot of work on climate over the years from highlighting the impacts of drought for farmers in the West to uh, looking at conservation policy within the Farm Bill or federal policy to highlighting stories of climate resilient practices on farms. That's all work that we've been, been doing. It's been important to our organization. But with our climate statement this year, we really wanted to articulate that this is something that is a priority for our organization, for our coalition, and that farmers need to be at the center of climate policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, centering racial equity. We, though the structural barriers that I mentioned earlier are not experienced equally by all farmers, and that Racism, systemic racism means that young farmers of color, indigenous farmers, do not have equal access to careers in agriculture. And so to us, centering equity in our work means 
committing specific resources to farmers of color and indigenous farmers. 95%, uh, another census stat um, that came out in April, 95% of farmers in the U.S. are white. And <clears throat> that is not because of a discrepancy in interest in working the land. That is because of specific policies um, that were designed to exclude and that result now in who is able uh, to own land and who is able to pass that land through generations. And also, we see in who is deciding our agricultural policy in this country um, is not representative of those most impacted by that policy. And uh, this year, the Senate Democrats um, did a survey of their staff, and the Agriculture Committee is exclusively white, the staff of that committee, right? And they're the ones who basically are writing our policy. Um, so, if we are going to meet our mission, we need to center the voices of those most marginalized by our political system. It's the only way that we're going to meet our mission. And it's, it's fundamental to our work. Um, the, that history of oppression and marginalization has created the system that we have today, and so we have to address that marginalization and oppression if we're going to build the system that we believe in, that we want to see. And I want to take some time to acknowledge the harm that our coalition has done and where we've gotten strong over the last 10 years. In the beginning, we thought that if we really focused on economic and structural barriers in agriculture, that we would help all young farmers succeed. But, but, but by not specifically working on, and talking about racism, Farmers of color did not see their needs and experiences reflected in the priorities of our coalition. And and our policies and our programs that we created, because they were not specifically designed for farmers of color, they may have been inclusive, but they were not equitable. Right? That equity piece is really about the design and who is making the decisions, who the programs are designed for, and then um, the result is radically different when that's the case. Um, I also wanted to specifically um, acknowledge some work on our staff um, by Michelle Hughes, our former development director. Um, not this Michelle Hughes, but another <laughs> member of our staff. And she was really, the, the one who launched our equity program, and um, among, along with other staff members and board members, um, did a, the bulk of the labor in writing our equity statement, and our equity statement in support of Black Lives from a few years ago, that we really all benefited from, benefited from as a coalition. Um, but that labor that Michelle did was really not acknowledged to the full extent and was invisible in a lot of ways. And so I want to really recognize and appreciate that really important work that has launched us on this path that we're taking now that we are not at the end of, we're just at the beginning of, but I wanted to acknowledge that. And some of the ways that we're honoring that commitment, um, you know, a lot of this work for our staff begins at the organizational level. So as a staff, we are committing to challenging ourselves to live up to our racial equity statement and addressing the ways that our organization, our structures, our processes perpetuate white supremacy. We are developing a racial equity toolkit for our chapters so that we hope that our chapters can join us in this work and will join us in this work. Uh, we are Working to integrate equity into all of our policies, into our programming. Uh, we are very thankful for the work of our California team, specifically our program director, Mai Nguyen, and uh, Ernesto Mesa. We also think it's really important in spaces like this, in convergence, to dismantle racism. And I think for us, this means we want to practice uh, racial affinity caucusing, and that's something that's going to happen a little bit later today. And you've got some uh, materials in your folders that will talk.
talk a little bit more about that process. Um, it's something that we've been engaging as an organization, as staff, and for me, uh, it's been incredibly powerful. <coughs> I think um, even in this space, in this conference, I still have a lot of residual uh, feelings about being in a lot of conferences and feeling very marginalized as a person of color. I mean, these, you know, farming conferences are really rough sometimes. And I think it's really important that we recognize that our movement, our coalition, has a lot of more work to do to make sure that farmers of color feel like they belong and that they have power in this movement. And this caucusing is a step towards us, uh, for us to practice that power sharing, uh, to practice safety, and for me it's been incredibly useful to be in a caucus and to have this uh, opportunity to speak with peers freely and safely, but then also to be pushed by my peers to take action, to you know fight for what I, I feel is just, and to really practice the role that I want to be in this organization and in this coalition. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that this is really new for a lot of you. This is probably going to be a first causing experience for many. And at first, you know, there's there can be feelings of, like, this is really odd to be separate. Like, why aren't we working on this together? And it's really important um, as white people to acknowledge our specific role and responsibility in doing the work of dismantling racism. And this causing opportunity is space for us to do that work um, without really relying on the labor of our uh, farmers of color in the room to guide us or instruct us. This is really on us to, to create the solutions that we need as a coalition too. Um, and yeah, and I hope that you bring an open mind to it um, and are really just committed to learning and growing in the work because that, that level of discomfort is needed to grow and for us to get better at doing this. So. I encourage you to take that on an open mind. Oh yeah, we need you. <laughs> um, we have some big goals, as you just heard, that we've laid out. And we really need your work on the ground, as always, now more than ever. You are the National Young Farmers Coalition in your states and regions, right? You are the ones that people meet and you are the ones who can bring people along. Uh, and so we are so thankful for your work in that and want you to know that, that we're really here to serve you in doing that work. And so if there are ways that we are missing the target, we would love to hear from you. If you have big ideas, please bring them to us. This is how we make most of our strategy is really just um, our members coming up with great ideas that we support you in achieving. So um, over the next three days, me and Martine are here um, to have those individual conversations and of course following convergence as well. We have, as Kate mentioned, an open door policy. Just give us a call, send us an email. That's really um, our commitment to you all to be here with that.